in this video I have another turntable to uh, review. This one here was another one. This one was given to me. I'm turning on some lights here. This one was given to me. Uh, I'm not... This was not given to me by a company. This was given to me by uh, a, a client gave me this. Said he didn't have any more use for it. He had already used it for what he bought it for. Transferring his records over to his computer. And he was throwing it out. So, asked me if I wanted it. I said, sure, perfect one for a review. Now, unlike the other wooden turntable, this one's all plastic and it really feels kind of cheap. It's a belt drive. It's got the conventional conventional drive belt and a little DC servo motor in here. It feels really cheap. It's all plastic. But one thing it does have is it does have a proper tone arm on this one. It has a proper counterweighted tone arm that you can set and it has been balanced for two grams and it has a proper a proper magnetic cartridge. It has a selectable output for either magnetic line level or it, it has a built-in preamp. And this unit also has a USB output which you can plug into a computer. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to uh, put a record on here and we'll just take a quick listen. This record needs to be cleaned. Oh well. Um, we'll take a quick listen to this and then I'm going to plug it into my laptop and we'll make a recording from this and actually listen to the sound on how this thing works. So, to start this up, we just press, it's got two start stop buttons on it. Why they have two stop start stop buttons on it, I'll never know, but uh, we just start it up. And uh, start the record playing. sure quite how this thing works so um, I didn't get any software or anything with it I'm going to plug it into my computer I have a feeling that if I fire up audacity I should be able to see the uh, this should show up as a USB recording device I think that's how it's gonna work but let's try it I've got the USB cord here and I'm just gonna plug it into my computer and I'm gonna let it auto detect and see what happens so I've never installed anything. In fact, this computer has never had Audacity installed on it until about five minutes ago. So let's plug in the USB port. And it says, USB driver has been installed. Perfect. Let's see if the Audacity will find this... Um, if I can find Audacity on here, here it is. Let's see if it will find this as an input device. And I haven't installed any uh, MP3 encoders or anything. I'm going to record this as a WAV file and we'll do a comparison. I've picked George Benson Breezen off of a vinyl because I have this recording on CD. So we're going to take a, we're going to do a comparison between the analog recording from this turntable recorded directly as a WAV file onto my laptop, we're going to compare it to a CD. Now I just have to find my input here, and uh, da, 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 da. it might be it might be USB audio. Let's see whether it sees that says USB audio, and I just got to turn on the monitor here so I can. Well, we'll just start playing some music first of all, and see whether I can. Okay, let's just see whether I can uh, turn that down there. I want to see whether I can um, see it show up here. Again, I, I've never done this on this unit, on this computer yet, so please bear with me here. And maybe I'll maximize that to make it a little easier to see what I'm looking at here. And if I have my audio monitor, where are we here? This looks a little different than the one on my computer because my monitor is a different size. And the layout is just a little bit different. Ah, monitoring, okay. Okay, there it is. <laughs> We're off the end of the scale here. 
I have to turn the levels down big time. So that is now showing my audio. And I don't have my audio set to give me feedback through the speakers on this thing, so, uh, but it's, it's set to record here. And I just want to make sure that I'm set to the right format here. So where are we here? Tracks. I'm just looking to see here because I, this is... Um, this is uh, never been set up on this unit yet. So preferences. Recording. Quality. Okay, 16-bit. Uh, I don't need the sample rate, it's set for 44. And uh, do there none? Okay, blah, 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 blah. And... Okay, so... Now, let's go back and select my monitoring here again. There we go, okay. Now it works, so now I've got my through my speakers. Let's uh, let's start recording here. Oops! I'll try that again. I jumped the I jumped the gun there. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna let this record and I'll save it once it's finished recording, and then we'll do a comparison when we edit the video. So this is certainly a, a way that I would actually prefer to use this. And in fact, of the two turntables that I've got here that both do this, if I'm picking one to keep, I'd be picking this one probably just because this will interfere a lot, uh, or this will interface a lot better with my recording setup that I've got now, which is essentially what I do. I do the same thing with my, my techniques into Audacity, but uh, uh, this will just USB right in, makes it you know real simple setup. Bam, done, don't have to worry about anything. But uh, anyway, if I was to keep one, this would probably be the one that I would keep. But I would, let's do a sound quality uh, comparison here. And the song's coming up to an end here, and just like any other time you're using Audacity, you just hit the stop button to stop it. And then we can trim the files, trim the, you know. And I mean, I can even take the clicks and stuff out here. So if you've got any scratches or anything on the record, this is the nice thing about doing it this way is that, okay, I've recorded the track, okay, I'm done, I stop it, oh, there we go, okay, I've stopped. And now I just wanna clean up the end a bit, cut out that little bit at the end, delete. And we got a few clicks and pops here. I'm not gonna take the clicks and pops out uh, when, I, when I save this, just because I, want it, I don't wanna add any coloration, I wanna be able to see how the quality of this thing sounds. We'll go back to the beginning of the file here because I had a bit of a false start at the beginning. We'll just play the beginning and I'll cut out the false start. Okay, there's my false start. Well, my music's going to start right about here. So there's where we start. So I'm just going to, I want to cut that whole bit out at the beginning. So I'm just going to go highlight it. Drag over to the left and press delete. So now my file starts when I hit the space bar. Good, I'm happy. I'm gonna save this file somewhere where hopefully I can find it. Uh, let's see here, go down here to da, 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 export audio. And I'm not gonna have a heck of a lot of choices on there because as I say, I haven't installed, well, it does even have MP3. I'm gonna save it as a 16-bit wave though just because um, I want to uh, get the best possible quality. And I'll just find a place to, uh, to file this where I can find it. Uh, yeah, I'll just throw it on my D drive, what the heck. And I'll just stuff it in the root directory here because uh, that way I can find it. There, we'll save it. And I don't need to tag it. It's gonna save it, I'm gonna take it into the studio we're going to copy it over to a USB drive so I can stuck it on the computer and we can compare this thing. 
and I'm going to compare it to a CD. Now, I actually have this album in two different formats. I have this one, which is the original. This is the original Warner Brothers release of Breezen. Um, probably the first... This is probably, I think, the first jazz album I actually bought with my own money <laughs> when I was like about, I don't know, 12 years, 12 or 13, I guess about 13 years old, I bought this album. And I played it so much, I actually wore the record out and I had to buy it again. And when I bought it again, I actually bought it from Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs. It was a very expensive, heavy pressing, and it sounds fantastic. I'm not using that version. I'm using a regular pressing to compare this. And then I went and bought it again on on CD when CD came out because, hey, I had to have the best, right? So so I have it on three formats. I have it on regular vinyl. I have it on half-speed mastered, which was the Mobile, mobile Fidelity's uh, way of mastering things. What they would do is they would run the lathe at uh, 16 and two-thirds RPM, and they would play back the original master tape, which was 15 IPS. They would play it back at seven and a half. And the idea behind half-speed mastering was it gave the cutter twice as much time to carve an accurate groove. And they actually did sound considerably better than a regular pressing done at regular speed. If you've ever heard one of Mobile Fidelity's uh, recordings, the, the sound quality of it is it's as good as any vinyl I've ever heard. Uh, and I, I'm not joking. But I think the CD version still sounds better. Let's uh, let's compare the two of them here and see how this thing sounds. Anyway, before I do that, we'll just bail out of uh, that. I already saved it, so shut down my laptop for now. Let's take a quick peek at this thing. I don't have a cover for it, so I'm, I can't really turn it over on its side, but let's just take a look at what's underneath this thing. We disconnect it from my amplifier first. So as you can see from this one, this is an ion, it's a turntable, USB, TT USB. It's a belt drive USB enabled turntable, so it does not have any recording capability. It just has a, a, a digitizer, an A to D converter on there. Um, and uh, it's uh, sampling at 44.1 at 16 bit. And it just outputs on USB. As you can see here on the back, there's not much on the bottom of the control panel here. You've got a USB output, you've got a gain control, and you have a switch. Photo output or line, so it has a built-in preamp. So this, this will work for people that have got an amplifier that doesn't have phono inputs, which until recently, none of the newer ones did. Right? Every, every receiver up until the, I guess, mid-90s had a phono input on it. And then... The phono input just disappeared because nobody was buying vinyl, so why do we need a preamp built in? But everything in the 80s up until the early mid-90s had a phono preamp. And then the phono preamp, the phono input disappeared. So this turntable has got both. It's got it's, it's got a magnetic cartridge, obviously, so that's going to give good sound. Um, but it's also uh, got a preamp in it, so someone who doesn't have a uh, preamp built in on their receiver or their amplifier can plug this in without having to go through a phono preamp. That's the problem I face in my studio because my Luxman a tube receiver or my tube amp, my, it's a hybrid amp, the uh, phono preamp has developed a problem again. I've already fixed it once and uh, I haven't bothered to tear it out and fix it again. So I haven't been able to play any records off my uh, techniques in my studio. Um, I'm not, I, I've digitized all of my records now anyway, so I don't really have a need to sit and play vinyl, but uh, um, it would be nice once in a while. And say That's why I say I might just hang on to this thing so that if I have a record that I need to digitize, I can just haul this out, plug it into the USB on the computer, and bingo, bango, bango, done. I don't have to fiddle around with my other turntable. i got to drag out a preamp for it to plug it in uh, just because I haven't, I haven't gotten around to disconnecting my Luxman and bringing it back in the shop and fixing it for the sake of the phono preamp not working. Uh, it'll be another project for some point I'll, when I get around to taking it out of my studio I'll bring it back in and uh, we'll check it over again. Anyway, uh, this thing's also got an 8th input, stereo input, so you could plug in a uh, headphone plug like from an iPod or something and it will digitize and 
that brings its own unique kind of uh, feature to this because with that eighth of an input, you could, uh, in theory, stream your Spotify or any of your other streaming services off your phone. You could plug it into here to the eighth of an inch input and use the capture device in this to stream it to your computer to record those programs. You could do the same thing by just plugging your phone into the audio uh, input on your computer, so not really a big deal. It's two speed, 33, 45. So say it starts up pretty quick. You know, it's going within a, it's going at full speed within a quarter turn. So it's a it's a really quick starting unit. So you can cue this thing up. You can cue your music up, back cue it, get your recorder ready to go, hit record, and you're good to go. Anyway, very basic unit. This wasn't going to be a real long video. I'm not going to tear this thing to pieces because I'm not getting I'm not showing this off for the build quality of it. Um, it's plastic. It, uh, you know, well, we can pull the turntable off. Maybe I think that comes off. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Okay. So there you go. It's 2008 when this thing was manufactured. There's our belt. It's a plastic table. Yes, you know, made to look like metal. It's painted. It's a plastic turntable on a metal, a metal spindle there. Um, cheap turntable. It's got a magnetic cartridge on it. What else can I say? You know, it's not a high-end unit by any by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it's not high-end at all. But we'll see how the sound quality is on this piece of fine. I was going to say Chinese equipment, but I think this one came from Taiwan. Is that where it came from? I believe this one said it was made in Malaysia. Fine piece of Malaysian equipment. The uh, other one that I reviewed, the by one by one, actually looks nicer because it's all wood. This is this is plastic, but this has a better tone arm. So what would be the perfect cheap turntable with USB? The other one with this tone arm. That would be a much better choice. And I like the other one, it, it, it had good sound, it didn't have a magnetic cartridge, so that was a down on it. It didn't have um, a counterweight, it didn't have any skate, so that was a bit of a downer, and it was it was tracking up at about 4 grams, whereas this one here, I set it for 2 grams, so um, you know, a little more gentle on the records, and of course a magnetic cartridge, it's better sound quality, and I can put any magnetic cartridge on here, just a standard screw mount, so I could put a Sure or anything on there, and it's going to be a good unit. Um, kind of cheap on the table side of things, but you know what? It's uh, you know, it might be an idea. Rip the rip the digitizing board off this thing and stick it on my techniques. Now that might be a that might be a usable good hack. Take the the digitizing board off this thing and stick it on my techniques. You guys, I just wanted you guys to see this. I've I've dug out my mobile fidelity sound lab um, recording of the same album. And of course, here's the record, the original master recording from Mobile Fidelity. So this is my my nice SLM1 that's in my studio that I use once in a while. I've dug out my preamp and hooked it up, and we're going to cue this one up here and uh, let it play. We're going to record this and uh, we'll do a comparison. We're going to compare the CD version and the uh, half-speed mastered vinyl version recorded as a WAV file. The CD version is actually recorded as an MP3 at uh, 384 kilobits. We'll compare this record here and we'll compare the one done with that ION turntable so you guys can hear the difference in the sound quality.
that's a look at this thing. We're going to, you'll know, well, by now you've heard the sound off of it anyway, but we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.